you people. I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. So I really know the old ways, traditional witchcraft, because I was taught it by my mum. And she by her mum, and she by her mum. And I'm here today with my ever popular online almanac series witches. And today's almanac series is of course April. April. I'm so happy spring has started, summer's around the corner, it's April! <laughs> and this is my almanac video for it. <laughs> As always with my online almanac series, I'm going to give you first of all a general April overview for witchcraft energies and activities that you might do in April as a whole and then we'll go into a bit more detail and look at significant dates throughout April, the traditions associated with them and how you might celebrate them through witchcraft. April is known for its showers because the earth is warming up with the lengthening of the sun and this interacts with the cold air coming in from the sea and we all get soaking wet. In fact I got caught this morning I was buying myself a special treat in Starbucks and I parked in the car park and I had to rush in and I have never been so soaked in my life. And of course, as soon as I got inside, it stopped. And that's April showers for you. April is a month for you to look upwards into the heavens, not just for the showers. There's also all sorts of other things going on in the sky in April. One of the things I've always wanted to do and have done is cloud bust. I have never been able to myself I did have, when I was younger, a school friend, I mean, we were very young, you know, so seven or eight, and it's one of my sort of quite early witchcraft memories, standing around, and she could bust any cloud. You'd say to her, what about that one? And she'd go, mm -hmm, and the cloud would disperse. But April is the month to practice this, because we've got lots of little clouds which float over our blue skies, pour with rain, and then scuttle off into the blue. So you could try a bit of cloud busting in April. Good time to do it. Because if it pours with rain and then the cloud disperses, I would call that a success. Another reason to look for the heavens, of course, is that April is one of the great bird migrations. The beautiful woodcock is leaving. About 1.5 million of them are going to leave our shore on a long, long migration towards Russia, where they breed, along with the rather cockshaw starlings. They also like to leave at this time of year and head back to Russia to breed. We do have a native population of starlings as we have a native population of woodcock, but mostly they are migratory. But at the same time that the birds are leaving, we've got those who are coming. So the beautiful cuckoo, that perennial spring bird, is coming over in April. Do you know the cuckoo rhyme? The cuckoo comes in April, it sings its song in May, at the end of June it changes its tune, and July it flies away. That's the old cuckoo, they only come here for four months to dump their kids, don't they? On the willow warblers, also another migratory influx bird. And we're also going to get the nightingales, house martins and white throats come in April. April is the time when I believe the dawn chorus gets its loudest. I'm not sure if it's at its peak, but it gets its loudest. Because of course, these migratory birds come here, sit down, think, ah, oh, I want to guard some territory. Look at that girl over there, she's rather fit, and lay some eggs. And so they sit and they sing. And I have studied birds all of my life. I'm slightly a bird nerd. And so therefore, I actually believe that they sing for the pure joy of it. The lengthening days, of course, now are providing the amount of light that is required for egg laying. For April really is the abundance of eggs. The Christian faith rather imposed veganism during Lent on the British population, saying that you had to be dairy free, animal products free and meat free. And if you didn't live by the sea or near a river, then you couldn't eat any fish anyway. And you're only allowed those on certain days of the week, if you were lucky. But the good thing about eggs is they store very well. So of course, all these poor Christians would hoard their eggs. And then on Easter Sunday, when they're allowed to break their fast, they're left with an overabundance of eggs. And what better way to get rid of them than to decorate them, give them to children so they can roll them down the hill and play with them. 
So with all the April showers and the birds migrating, there's a lot going on as well as later on in the month, there are three meteor showers, which all coalesce together on a particular date. It shows us the hope that spring's eternal in the month of April. So that's my overview. Not particularly witchy, is it? Apart from do some cloud busting. Let's get into the detail then. 1st of April. I am sure you all know that the 1st of April is April Fool's Day. Now there is absolutely nothing witchy about April Fool's Day, but I could not resist and couldn't really have an almanac without putting April Fool's Day within there. There are many, many traditions associated with how April Fools came into being, but I'm going to give you my favourite, which is possibly one of the eldest, so maybe is actually true. So in the reign of King John in the early 1200s, King John, he, you know, he was the evil king who took over from Richard the Lionheart, the good king. King John decided that the county of Nottinghamshire in England was particularly fine hunting country and that he would like to build a hunting lodge there. So he sent the king's men off to Nottinghamshire to the village of Gotham to, in order to annex the land and build himself a lodge. Now, of course, the good folk of Gotham were particularly unimpressed by this desire of King John and so decided to try and outfox him. So when the king's men approached, they all of them went out and pretended to be mad. And, you know, and they put on a good show. You know, they pretended to sort of drown fish, I believe, is one of the ways they did so, and stand on their heads and put straw in their ears. I, that is scant information about the details of that bit. The king's men, seeing this pile of madness, then went home and said, we don't want to build a hunting lodge there. We're likely to turn mad like those people. Obviously, there's something in the water. And they were persuaded to leave Gotham alone. Ever since then, according to legend, April Fool's Day has commemorated this trickery. Next up, we have the 2nd of April, which is, of course, a Christian faith of Good Friday. Now, this is the day that they mark the commemoration of Christ's death on the cross. However, it has a very long tradition with the delightful, delicious, and one of my favorite hot cross buns. Now, everyone thinks that the cross in the hot cross buns was a Christian symbol. Well, yes, of course it was, because they annexed it. Before then, it was well used by the Anglo-Saxons as an offering to the goddess Oistra and represented the four quarters of the moon and the four seasons and they would put it on their altars to her to make sure they had a good harvest. So there are many, many superstitions associated with hot cross buns. One of them is that if you cut your hot cross bun in half and toast it and then give half to a friend to eat and you eat the other half, you will cement that friendship together and it will never be broken. Isn't that a lovely tradition? I love that tradition. I think it's great. I think we should all go and do that. Hot cross buns are said to be very good at repelling evil. And they were hung from the rafters of people's homes in their kitchens. And in fact, there is a tradition in the Widow's Son pub, which is in London, where the widow hung a hot cross bun from her rafter every year, hoping that her son, who had sadly died at sea, would return to eat it. They continue this tradition, the Widow's Son pub, and there is a bag of <laughs> rotting, hot cross buns hanging from their ceiling, but not mouldy ones, because the tradition is that the buns do not go mouldy. Who knew? This year, Easter falls on the 4th of April. My brother's birthday as well. Happy birthday, Billiam! The Anglo-Saxons called April Easter Monarch. The Oster Monarch. I have no idea if I pronounced that right, but this is how it's spelled. The Oster Monarch. This means the month of the goddess Easter. And of course, there is such an etymological meaning, you know, word associated link between Easter and Easter. It brings all the promise of womanhood and abundance and fertility, as well as looking forward and hope that also has links towards the dawn and the East, Easter. It is a time for children. It's such a joyful and happy time. It was, of course, taken from the festival of Easter, from the Anglo-Saxons by the Christians, which is why we have pretty much the same name, don't we? Just a slightly more anglicised version of it. And eggs and children go together hand in hand. And I'm going to give you an old Romany spell, 
which even start on Easter Sunday. And this is a traditional gypsy spell, which is where a lot of the old ways magic you know, did come from. I mean, they did uh, chat to the cunning women of their times. I don't know if it works. I don't know anyone who's done it. I found it in quite an old book and I thought it was a charming spell. And I don't see why it shouldn't because you're doing the energy of it. But here is my Romany spell to conceive a child. For this spell, you will need an egg that you have broken in half and cleaned the shell. You need a representation for the child you wish to conceive and I'm going to use some rose quartz shaped in an angel. It just needs to be able to fit inside the eggshell. Lastly, you will need a piece of material and I found some satin ribbon. Start the spell on Easter Sunday. Take your poppet and place it within the two halves of the shell. Taking your material, I want you to carefully wrap it around the egg and the poppet. Place this package on a windowsill for 28 days. Every morning, you're going to unwrap the egg from the material and take out the poppet. Place the poppet on the windowsill to be bathed in the sunlight each night Place the poppet back within the egg and wrap it again in its material. And place the package by the side of your bed overnight before you leave it on the windowsill the next day. The gypsies say a child will be conceived. The 12th of April is the new moon, beautiful new moon. Now this moon is in Aries and Aries will bring you creativity and fun. This is the time to go out and mingle and be social. Funnily enough, the UK government is actually lessening its COVID restrictions on the 12th of April. And so on the 12th of April, the best thing I think that as a witch you could do is have a party. Invite some friends around, sit in the garden, get your drinks out, have some lovely food, hot cross buns, always a good one, and enjoy yourselves. Now, as I mentioned previously, the 23rd of April is the time when there is a confluence of three meteor showers. And two of them are at their peak on the 23rd. These meteors are the Lyrids, the Puppids and the Aquarids, and they will all be giving us a great show. The Lyrids have particularly long trails coming down to the earth and are particularly spectacular. There is no real significance in these meteor showers, apart from the fact that we need to go out and look at them, because this is a particularly spectacular fireworks party that April's putting on to celebrate spring. The 26th of April and the early morning of the 27th is the day of the full moon. It's best viewed as it rises on the 26th, but it doesn't come to its full perigee until about 3.30 in the morning. Now, the perigee is when the moon is closest to the Earth, and it is going to look 14% bigger, apparently. So we can call it a supermoon. And so supermoons have a greater strength and a greater energy. So get ye out and make your moon water. Next week, I'll make a moon water video, and you can watch it then. And if I do, I'll put it here. This supermoon is also the perfect time to do a drawing down the moon spell, which I think we were doing in February's almanac, possibly. I'll put whatever video's almanac it was in up here for you to watch. I can't really remember. But a drawing down the moon spell is very simple. You go outside, you cast a circle, you take your wand, you point it at the moon, and you ask the moon to bless and recharge you. And the moon should shine her beauty and strength down on you. And if you're feeling a bit bleh, uh, which I can quite frankly say I've been feeling a lot recently due to the lack of everything in my life due to builders. I hate builders. I never want to see a builder again. Go out and stand under the super moon of the full moon and do a drawing down the moon spell. Finally, we have the 30th of April. This is Walpurgisnacht. In the UK, this was the 
traditional date of the devil's birthday. This is the night where the devil rides through the land, collecting his followers with him, charging them with their tasks for the oncoming year. It is the time when the evil is at its most extant in this country, the devil's birthday. The dark witches and wizards would hold bonfires to celebrate this night of their dark master. The good people of the earth would therefore stay inside and hang heather over their doors to prevent any evil spirits stopping as they passed by and casting their malevolence across them. And a lot of the dark witches and warlocks did celebrate and commune with the devil. And if you speak of the devil, the devil appears. So tonight, unless you are that way inclined, Stay inside, lock your doors, hang heather to prevent an evil entity entering your home. This feast day I find so much more scary than Halloween. Halloween is merely when the dead walk the earth and I spend quite a lot of time communing with the dead. Halloween is when the devil rides out and all his minions follow. And then we come to the end of April. But don't forget, in the middle of April is going to be my coven meeting. And if you want to join, do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and you'll find all the details. It is great fun and I look forward to seeing you there. Do come and join us. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a subscribe and a like. And I'll see you in my next video.